Hey, this is Josh from Great Leopard Apparel. We're here today at Creme de la to get an exclusive interview with RJ and Ryan. Let's go in there and find out. You know. All right, guys. So uh, welcome back again. I guess. Yeah. Um, <coughs> this is uh, well, the viewers might as well know, but um, we this is our second interview with Creme de la Sans. This is RJ and uh, Ryan. So uh, for formality's sake, once again ask you guys uh, to say your name and what you do here. I'm RJ Urbano, so I'm basically the uh, executive chef and <laughs> co-owner and this is uh, my partner. Um, Ryan San Diego, manager, barista, bartender. Cool. If I can start with uh, RJ, uh, what did you think you were going to be when you were uh, when you were younger and uh, how did that turn out? Man, there was a lot of things that you kind of go through, you know, growing up, like you're going to have a lot of interest, but there's going to be those very few that, you know, actually know what they're going to be ever since, you know, when they were like five years old, because that's always what they've dreamed to be. It was a little bit different for me just because I guess I had no hat yet, or uh, I didn't know my way or which way I was going to. So, yeah, I went through high school kind of figuring out like, oh, maybe I'll be a mechanic or like a social work officer. Went through a lot of uh, phases, but then once I got into the industry, uh, I mean, just kind of changed my life and I knew uh, it's what I want. It's what I really wanted to do and be the best. I could be at it. Ryan, how about, how about you? What's, what's your experience with that? For me, like as a kid, I wanted to be engineer or architecture. So like being in this industry compared to that, something so professional, it's completely different than what I was expecting. For me, coming to this industry was a mistake. In high school, my friend offered me a job just for fun. And I was like, okay, I need a second job, why not? I ended up staying there, and now I ended up here after like three, four years now, being in the industry. Nice. So that, that first job, was that uh, was that in the restaurant industry too? No, that one was actually uh, the opera, opera lounge. So just heavily bar scene, just bar backing, bartending. Right. So basically that got me a lot more into bartending. Tell us a little bit about the beginning of Creme de la and uh, how did you guys get the idea for it and uh, what inspired you to make it happen? I guess it was kind of out of the blue as well. Uh, it was 2015, a lot of things were happening, right? Uh, a lot of people were doing like cupcakes, cakes, and then there was the whole macaron trend. And um, at that point, I just came back from BC around August of uh, 2014. And then I started working full time at the time and I was thinking, for a while, you know, what's something that, you know, Winnipeg doesn't really have or nobody's really doing that, you know, maybe we could make a living or like a little market out of it, possibly like start something up and that's where it was kind of born. I thought about ice cream just because I was learning it uh, during the time and I thought it was really simple. It happens, you know, to be that there was uh, one on sale on Kijiji, like a super good one. Brand new, hasn't even been touched, but yeah, it was ice a cream maker. Yeah, it was an ice cream maker. Okay, right? cool. And then that's where it just kind of started off because I started doing it for my family and a couple of friends, and it started off uh, blowing off on Instagram. Next thing you know, like there was people like calling me and making orders, and uh, yeah, it just kind of snowballed. And then this place uh, came up for lease, and I just thought it happened. You know, to be by chance that I also got caught by the uh, health inspector, so they had to uh, shut me down <laughs> during that time. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, it came to the choice where I we wanted to like start something, and then I contacted um, Ryan here, see if he was inter interested in uh, maybe joining the team. You know, making something different in the north end. So Ryan, when RJ gave you that opportunity, or if he called you up or whatever. How, how did you first feel? Like, did you, were you on board right away? What was, what was all about? I kind of already knew I was on board right away. Like, before he even messaged me, he posted it up. So, like, if anyone was interested, I actually, my plan was to open a place in five years anyways, mm -hmm. to have, like, a cocktail bar, kind of similar to Albert Street Cocktail Co. in Winnipeg, something like that. So, at the time, I was working at a hotel bartending. So, for me, this was a perfect example and perfect opportunity. Mm -hmm. I was like, this might not ever happen again, so why not? Might as well just do it, take a risk. Yeah. Perfect. So, just the right time, right place, and... Basically, uh, It was already al along the lines of what you wanted. Yeah, like, it, everything was there, like, it couldn't have been, like, more simple to say yes. Cool, cool. What's, um, one important lesson that, uh, either of you, or both of you, 
uh, have learned in the restaurant industry in the in the past few years that you've been, and even in, just in this in, uh, restaurant itself? You're definitely going to learn a lot of things, but then I think the most important things that you need to learn um, is discipline within yourself. Um, it's easy to get complacent, especially once you have your own business, just because like. No one's there to tell you what to do, and you need to be on top of things yourself. And <clears throat> it's easy to like put those things away and, and just kind of like overlook it. That's the kind of plateau that you need to get over, um, just to see if you really want to be the best you can be, or are you just gonna stay where you are and not excel? There's a lot of decisions that you're gonna have to make that you know, aren't gonna be very easy. Really trusting your instincts as well, and just making sure that you know. You're trying to prepare yourself every single day or be better than who you were. Um, as long as you're trying to keep, you know, learning and continue moving forward, you shouldn't stop. Like Ryan, what do you think on, on your perspective? Like I know you, you do a little bit of different things than RJ would do in, in the industry, but um, I'm sure you have your own experience. Oh, did you do the question again for me? Uh, just What's something uh, like an important lesson for you personally that you've learned in the last couple of years? Just from this? Yeah. See, like he's he's thinking more of the aspect side of being in the restaurant itself. The thing that we've actually been talking about a lot lately is aside from the restaurant itself, because we're here every day, it's definitely just trying to take care of your body. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't have enough time to eat. Sometimes we just don't eat, or like we'll eat so much that we go food coma. We can't <laughs> do anything after that. Means we can't do For other sure. things. But yeah. basically, like if he's sick. Or if I'm sick, we can't really do anything. Like there was one time last year I was sick, I couldn't even come here. I tried to, try to come for three hours, I ended up having to leave right away after anyways. I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. I was just trying to clean, clean, do dishes, clean the bathrooms, I couldn't even do that. But that already like, was so much stress on us being healthy here, that put so much at risk, basically. Huh. It's a really good lesson, so pretty much you're saying yeah. like... It's all, it's all about balance. It's all about balance, really. yeah. Right, it all, that's what it all comes down to, is uh, trying to balance your life um, emotionally, physically, and you know, every, everything. Just because you can't keep you know, focusing on being successful and then you neglect everything else around you. Uh, you neglect the time with your family or even your pets or your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all very important, right? Hard work is very important. That's why you need to learn how to uh, delegate yourself. What's going to be more important, right? The text messages and all those notifications are always going to be there. They're not going to get. They're not going to go anywhere. Right? It's like our phones are our number one distractions most of the time. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and you know, again, it's just really. <laughs> over, it's just really overcoming. It's reality, right? No. Yeah, it's overcoming your own. Um, like I guess your own bad habits, right? Just because no one's gonna tell you like to get rid of it, right? Like it's really like the only person that can help you at the end of the day is yourself. We just have to realize it on our own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. That's a, it's totally a, a important lesson learned because like we grew up in a generation where when we were actual kids, like we didn't have phones when we were five or phones when we were ten, yeah. but. Um, like we had to, we, had, we grew with it and we learned how to use it and then all of a sudden we're addicted to it, right? Yeah, like you see kids now, like, like babies even at the table, like iPad just sitting there, parents not even like paying attention. Yeah. Like, like that's crazy, like, <laughs> when we were kids, like we didn't have any of that, you just, you had a coloring book. You go, go to a restaurant, you get a coloring book, you gotta do all of it. Yeah, now we're, they're gonna expect iPads for the kids. <laughs> no man, it's gonna be like iPads in the tables, so like, yeah. set areas for kids. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I, I added this question in for you guys and just to liven this up as well. For our viewers, can you tell us um, any good or funny stories that are appropriate enough for this interview uh, that's happened in the last couple of years that you could probably share with us? I'm just like, I'm just like, no. What is it? It's like, you're like, no, 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 Right, it's just because like some people are really going to be out there to like step on your toes like not just because they want to but simply just because they're not raised to you know really simply respect people and whatnot but yeah. I don't know I guess the funniest thing is uh, how I wouldn't say clueless okay yeah sure we can <laughs> sure we can <laughs> no say name that. dropping but yeah sure, yeah sure we can say that but it's it's just really mostly like you you get to understand how um, people really really like act or um, 
you get to understand people a lot more in this industry just because uh, yeah. it's kind of like a little psychology class, right? You get to see how people like sure. react towards each other and then you see them having a good time. And then that's why you want to focus on, you know, good food, you know, just because like sitting down on a fancy chair isn't going to make it like the best experience of your life. Right? It's just yeah. really when you're interacting with people and you're sharing like a good moment together, right? Like, I, I think that's like the funniest thing because it's very ironic. Yeah, for sure. Like, and dealing with general public is just it's tough. It's just, it just, it is tough. Yeah. You know, so you never know who's gonna walk in that door, and you never know what they're gonna say to you tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally, totally feel for you guys. But um, Ryan, do you have any? I'm like, I'm trying the whole time he was talking. I'm just trying to think. I like, <laughs> yeah, because I, I know like you guys are here like what, almost every day, and you guys have seen probably thousands of customers come through that door, right? Yeah, it's very hard to um, you know, recognize people unless they've actually come here, but even I can't put a, na like, a name on a lot of people anymore, unless like it's easy to pronounce, like, you have an old plain face. So, like, right. right. What is your favorite or best thing about uh, what you do as a chef or as an entrepreneur in this business? Um, yeah, in, in this running this restaurant? Well, I guess it's the freedom, right? Like that's number one thing. That's uh, the things that we always aim for, right? Once, you know, once we get out of college or once you complete your goals. For us, yeah, it came out of nowhere. We weren't necessarily ready to be entrepreneurs or like chefs or owners, but we just kind of toughed it out and had to like grow into it, like fill those big shoes. I think that's one of the best parts of just like really, you know, learning on your own, just really, you know, go to the deep end and, you know, don't be scared. Because um, anything can happen, but, you know, you fail this, you're not going to die. It's like, you just got to be a little, you're going to be stressed for a little bit, but it's just really trying to outgrow that shell that, you know, you've been in the whole time. And you just got to grow a new one afterwards. Your favorite or best thing about working in the industry that, that, you, that, that you find? It, it probably have to be the freedom for sure. Like the fact that we have our own place, we can literally do anything we want here as we see fit. As long as we think it's obviously going to help the business. Mm -hmm. But like the menu, we have total freedom. We can change it any way we want. We can serve different foods. We can have like pop ups here if we want. Like, like there's so many things that you can do. Like I can't even think of any everything we could do here. Yeah. Like that's where discipline comes back to again, right? Just because like yeah we can do whatever we want but not necessarily that we yeah. are, you know, going to do it. Yeah, it's, like that's where we have to think logically uh, yeah. about the whole thing. Obviously and, like think it all yeah. plan it all. Mm -hmm. Think through everything just because like there's a lot of details that goes into like food or even service or even how the kitchen flows or how inventory is gonna be and there's so many, you know, variables towards the industry. The favorite thing is that you have so much, it's unlimited what you could do. Yeah. But you limit much. yourself somehow, right? But it's just like, and also like it really sharpens your instincts um, because you, you have to trouble, you know, troubleshoot on the spot. You can't just, you know, like s stare at the problem and like, oh shit. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever told people that you couldn't do this, couldn't make this business happen? And uh, what keeps you going in hard times like that? Uh, why are you passionate about what you do? It's very hard. I've, I've had some people that, you know, aren't willing to support this business. And for me, like, that's not any of my business. Just because, you know, we're, we're trying to focus on here. We're trying to focus on ourselves and our growth. So, like, when it comes to people like that or, like, any negative comments, unless that they've been here and they actually had a bad experience where we made a mistake, that's different. We want to learn from it. But, the, again, there's, like, two sides of a coin. Um, and for us, it's just really, we just want to better ourselves all the time. Not a lot of people are willing to understand because they're, they're only going to understand at their level of, you know, perception. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's just whoever, you know, wants to, you know, come here and support and whoever enjoys our food, that's what matters to us. And that's why, you know, we, oops, sorry. That's why we keep, you know, doing this every single day just because seeing them, you know, happy and um, I see the food come out and it sees, you know, I see them like take the first bite and they actually smile and they're all having a great time and I don't know, that's something that you can't replace, sure. right? Like I know that, you know, compliments don't pay the bills, but I guess it just keeps us going to pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> so in a way it does, I yeah. guess, eh? So Ryan, what, what do you think? Like, have you, have you ever had some, uh, had some experiences with some, I guess, some negative, like, naysayers and 
Uh, how, how have you dealt with that, and what keeps you going on your own? I don't know, like, it's kind of the same thing, because it's the same perspective. Like, for me, most of the people that were doubting us was most of my family, saying, oh, it's not going to work, blah, 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 etc. All that stuff. Like, Asian, typical Asian families. Mm. Like, it's not a real job. Be, yeah. Be, <laughs> be like, doctor, like, be an yeah. engineer, be an architect. But no, when they found out about this, like, when I told them, they didn't even really say anything about it until they came by. Then they saw what we were doing. But obviously, like, we went through so many changes since we first opened last year. Mm -hmm. They see it now that it's like, it is a good business. We do know what we're doing. We're constantly trying to grow. Yeah. As for, like, trying to keep going, I don't know. Like, I have no idea sometimes. Like, <laughs> we're crazy, we, man. We, we, just, crazy. we just know, like, why would I put so much effort into this and just give it up? Like, say, maybe I want to give up tomorrow. Why would I just do that? I spend a, we spend a year and a half here almost every single day trying to make this work. So. I'd rather see this fail than just give up. Yeah, so pretty much like to the last, basically the last breath, day, the last breath. breath. Fight for it. You built, you built it up. You can fight for it. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, we uh, can see that. You know, yeah, it's your, it's your baby, right? It's like you gotta take care of like it's not not your together baby. But like you know, it's okay. We're partners. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I, mean, I was like, wait for us. Like, don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I think RJ's oh, done for it. Anyway, what was I gonna say? Something, something important. No, it's not important. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so pretty much you brought up a good point about uh, family support. Yeah. We we are we all come from Asian family backgrounds. We're probably second generation, right? When our parents were immigrants here. Um, I think this is a good topic to b uh, bring up because I think oh, there's what 60,000, 70,000 plus Filipinos here and even more uh, from, you know, different ethnicities. Yeah. What, what do you guys have to say about, um, you know, those, those kids whose parents are just like ours like, or uh, yours, Ryan, especially, is, who would say, "Oh, you should be a doctor." Blah blah blah. You know, like, how how do they how would they deal with that? You know, like, if, if they really want to be something else, what what kind of advice could you give to those guys? That's different. He's born here. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Well, uh, he, I, I was born here too, but I have I, don't know, I have some family that would say like, "Oh, like you should be this. You should be a doctor." Should be. It's, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard. It really depends on what you know family you go to. Like my parents were pretty supportive, and you know whatever it is decision I made as long as it wasn't too radical mm -hmm. yeah. um, right but I think family support is going to be the, one of the most important things out there uh, I can definitely say that my mom and dad has played a very very big role in this huge role yeah they, we wouldn't be here without those two definitely like guiding us through it helping us with the renovations and all the fixtures that's why we always need to be grateful to our parents right and that's the other thing that keeps me going just because um, they put you know, a lot of uh, heart and you know effort into this too, and that's not something that we just want to give up on. For sure. Yeah. Even if our parents are kind of against it at the beginning, like maybe yeah. your, your parents might have been, like the best choice isn't to like just cut believe them off. It, yeah. it. You gotta, you know, gotta believe it. You gotta get them on board, I guess, right? Get them on board and make them believe. Not always. Not everyone is always gonna support you know what you want to do, but as okay. long as like you believe in yourself, that's all you need. It's true, it's true. Our last question for you guys is, what is your advice for upcoming young entrepreneurs or people uh, going into this industry, the restaurant industry, and uh, those who want to follow their passions? What, what kind of advice do you have for those guys? Be a sponge. Uh, just absorb as much information as you can, learn from the right people, learn from like good people, and find the right connections. Connections are gonna be the, one of the number one things that you know, you're gonna need to make in any d industry for that matter, right? Because it can all be connected. And yeah, hard work, you know, uh, work smart as well. And uh, yeah, just really never give up because then there's gonna be those moments where it's really gonna test you and you don't know if this, way, this is what you wanna do. You're gonna wake up in the morning like, damn, why am I even doing this? Yeah. Right, but it's really up to you, you know, where you wanna go, how you wanna take your path. You pave your own path, have our own uh, different journeys that we need to uh, cross. For sure. Um, Ryan, do you, what, do you have any other... No, nope, you stole it. You stole it all? You stole the whole thing. All right, all right. Um, all right, so that's all the questions we got for you guys today. And uh, we thank you a lot uh, for uh, taking the second time to do the no interviews. Problem, yeah, um, it was really good. Uh, and thank you very much. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Man. Thanks, man. man. Thank you. All right. At the end of the day, this is all I really need. This is who I am. This is me. And I'm so glad that everything that happened 
brought me to where I am now. I can literally use it for everything, like whatever goes on over here, whatever happens there, whatever I'm.